Hey gang, welcome back again to Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy where the proof is in the singing. I'm continuing my series on how to sing like. Next up is Lane Staley from Alice in Chains. Before we get started, if you wouldn't mind, uh, please like and subscribe to my channel. That'd be super cool. Uh, don't forget to ring that bell so I can keep awesome videos coming your way. And I have a singing course. The course is called How to Sing Better Than Anyone Else and you can find it right here at KenTamplinVocalAcademy.com where the proof is in the singing. I also have a free singing forum there guys so if you want to start to learn how to sing, if you're an intermediate singer, if you're an advanced singer, we have a gob of free tutorials. You can post videos to get evaluations. Uh, like I said, there's like 20,000 people in there. That's a lot of people. That's a couple of arenas big rock arena is full of people all discussing all these different uh, uh, ideas about singing, how to get to certain places and singing using the KTVA method. Now, I want to say something. I've said it a few times. I'm going to keep repeating this. Einstein, Albert Einstein said something that is very prescient, which means a lot of foresight. He said that demonstration isn't a way to teach. It's the only way to teach. So the only way to really teach you guys how to do this stuff is to physically demonstrate it. Anything less, how could you possibly know? You can't go to a guitar teacher if that guitar teacher can't physically show you how to do it and just, well, a little of this, a little of that, take some textbook information, maybe something they learned on the internet and they're you know, regurgitating some information. If they don't do it themselves, they really can't teach you guys how to do it, guys. Come on, let's be realistic about this. So it, a little tip here and there, blah, blah, blah. You think that's really helping? I, I, could be, I could be a personal trainer right now and tell you to run up and down the block a bunch of times and you think that I'm great because uh, you think you're getting a little more strength, a little more energy, but that information ends very quickly and you really don't get very far and it's really not expert advice. It's just a little bit of information, a quick tip or trick, but it's not the nuts and bolts. So we're gonna get in nuts and bolts right now. Now, I chose man in the box and this version here I'm gonna do with Gabriela Gunchikova is actually up a full step and a half because um, Lane didn't sing super high, Gabriella has a lot of range. So um, in fact, I'm gonna grab my guitar real quick because I forget, I think the original version is in E flat. Let me double check this here, so yeah. So it's in E flat, sorry. I didn't get you too excited, I'm not gonna play the whole song. <laughs> I just wanna get a pitch reference. So you know, right? So if you wanna get that out, he grinds into the sound a little bit. And it's got like a real grindy kind of tone. Now, in Ken Tamplin Vocal Academy, I kind of tell you not to do this. However, sometimes we have to make exceptions if we're really truly trying to sound like someone else. So instead of my big open throat to go, ha, ha, hi, to get that kind of big sound, we got to thin the sound out if we're going to sound like Lane. So we go, yeah. And now if we really want to sound like Lane, we bring a lot of mask in. Right? Now, another thing he does is the way he compresses his air for distortion is also not technically correct but it sounds cool, right? And you can hear the desperation in it. So I remember seeing a couple concerts with him and two of them, and he was pretty drugged out, unfortunately, but the guy just left it all on the field. I mean, it sounded like he slit both wrists and was like, you know, okay, this is my last concert. And I'm not kidding. I mean, I, I walked away from there and it was kind of depressing. You know, it was, I said this before in one of the other um, videos that I did. In the grunge era, a lot of these bands, um, and Alison Chains kind of borrowed a lot from Led Zeppelin and stuff like that. It was very riff rock oriented, uh, unlike the 80s metal movement that was very, was also riff rock, but very corporate and very, you know, uh, I don't, I don't want to use the word homogenized, but it was very very, very corporate, let's just use that term. But but in, in, in the grunge era, they kind of went all the way back to like 60s, like you know, listen to, to a lot of the Kurt Cobain stuff, you know, a lot of the Nirvana stuff was sort of like, you know, okay, we're gonna get in our garage and we're gonna bash out a bunch of stuff together as a band and whatever kind of comes out, we'll put some vocals on top of it. So it's more about the vibe of it and then songs ensued. Whereas previously in 80s metal, which no one seemed to relate to, is what kind of spawned the grunge movement was when they looked at 80s metal and went, I can't relate to that. I don't, I don't know about, you know, living on a prayer and you know, all these happy clappy songs. And so they kind of moved to more of a depressed, 
anguishy kind of thing. You know, I, I hate the world around me. I don't know how I'm gonna live. I don't know where I'm gonna live. I can't make any money. I wanna play music. I'm frustrated with my family if I even have any. I'm definitely doing drugs, you know. And so you can literally hear the desperation in all of these guys, whether it's Cobain and Staley, whatever. You know, even Eddie Vedder, which I just did one on Pearl Jam a minute ago, and, and maybe not as much as, as Lane Staley, but you could really hear Scott Weiland, you know, and, and, and believe it or not, too, um, Chris Cornell, you know, he even discussed a few interviews about him having also depression issues. And so, you know, as you hear these bands that came out of Seattle, a lot of them didn't like to be called grunge bands. They just wanted to be called, you know, rock bands, whatever. Um, you know, there was Faith No More, you know, whatever. There was a lot of um, angst and frustration and pure desperation and you can really hear it in the music so you know, i'm a man in the box right so do it with me kind of kind of grind into the sound now you're going to feel a tickle in your throat especially you know, down in the trachea um and that's an esophageal reflex. What happens is, is that you're actually, it's tickling and you're compressing air all the way down at the glottis and then, and, and then you're kind of choking off the throat a bit. So there's, a, a, at some points, you're gonna, it, what it does is it kind of makes the whole vocal track kind of numb after a while and you get used to the sensation. And I'm not instructing you to do this, guys. I'm just saying that's how you get the sound. So I actually come at it from, a, I go, I'm a man in the box, right? I take a different approach approach the Ken Tamplin method, which is more of correct compression, um, so I don't hurt myself. But in Lane's case, to get that sound, that's not how he got the sound. So we have to be true to really what he did. So, um, whoa, won't you come and save me, right? And I like the sevens. They throw in some sevens at the time or come into a major gate, you know. Uh, but anyway, let's, let's get Gabriella a shot. I'll grab my guitar again after this so I can go back to the original key. But this is up, uh, let me see, we did this a full step so that would be f sharp to g i think this is in the key of g pretty cool to have a chick do it you know also that shows how the bar, my method works Save me. Now when, won't you come and, right? She uses the KTVA method. Now for me, I like that sound better because we can actually take that sound and kind of DO it up a bit and, and really distort the sound. So she, if you notice when she did, won't you, right? She's much bigger on the sound. Now again, I'm singing it up a full step and a half. So it's up a lot compared to the original, but she throws down really hard. She does a great job in the chorus, check it out. Save me. I'm not, I, uh, right! I'm not gonna sing it up that high because it won't sound like Lane because Lane's tone is a lot lower. It'll just sound really masky if I go so, yeah. Jade my eyes, can you show, so them should, Jesus Christ! So he's like, really, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's really pinching and squeezing on the sound. Now, for me, I could deceive you and make you think I'm sounding like Lane if I go, Hey, rather than hey, I don't know if you can hear the hey, hey. Do you hear the difference in the tonality of the two different types of distortion? Well, why that's important is one of them actually literally 
is like taking just vice grips to my vocal folds and squeezing them as hard as I can and then taking the cricoarytenoid uh, and uh, arytenoid, uh, arytenoid cartilage, thyroid arytenoid cartilage and pulling the, the cords really tight and just shoving a bunch of air across. That's one way of doing it. The way that I'm doing it when I sing it more like Dio is I'm pulling the cords a little bit and I'm actually getting them to, or to relax and using a little bit of false folds, a little bit of fry and some other things in it to relax into a state. Hey! Rather than I don't know if you can hear the difference, but there's a big difference. So one of them really pinches and squeezes really hard over the chords. So, but anyway, so Gabrielle is actually doing the correct way of distorting the sound rather than a harmful way. And she could sing like this for hours on end without um, hurting herself. And that kind of distortion that I'm talking about also gives you the ability to, um, add percentages of tone. So you can have a little bit of it, a little bit more, a little bit more until you get full blown, you know, blood curdling screams like I do on, uh, you know, the end of uh, uh, the, what's the casino song, the Chris Cornell song I did, um, any of the James Bond song. Anyway, I do a lot of screams like that. But um, in this case, you know, it's Lane, so let's continue with Lane. <laughs> I notice the whoa, how open. Whoa, Joe! Right, she's real open. And again, for me, this is up again a full step and a half compared to the original. So I'm trying to find a way to not make it sound real small. Like it, normally I'd have to bring it up into the face. Um, to, but I want to, you to identify my sound with her sound, how she's getting the roundness of the sound, the fatness of the sound, and still adding the distortion in a safe way. And it's really cool to have a chick do this too, rather than just showcasing guys. I do have another version I've done with another um, student of mine. Did a pretty good job, but I thought it'd be fun also to showcase girls because they're more fun to watch. And it's more unique to have a girl do it too. And I could be the guy in this scenario and show you the guy parts, right? Here we go. point out something else. I, I, I get a lot of bashing. As you guys know, I'm a man of faith and I get a lot of bashing. You know, I can't believe you sang this song. You know, it's so satanic. Oh, the devil, you know, was singing this song is deny your maker, Jesus Christ, this, that, whatever. And I used to think that too. I read this story about how the song was written. And then I also really listened to it instead of just judging somebody. Um, I, let that be a lesson to all of us. Um, I actually read the lyrics and the lyrics are interesting because, you know, um, let's let's go through them. I want to do this just for all, all my, my judging guys out there. So. Let me go back, sorry. Here we go. Let's read the, do the lyrics, watch. Feed my eyes. Can you sew them shut? So he's, he's wrestling with something. And he said, feed my eyes. Like one, one minute I'm feeding my eyes with something I don't want to see. And the next one he says, well, can you sew them shut? Right? So let's start there. Next line. Jesus Christ, and then the next line is, now in this track I put don't deny your maker, but um, the original is deny your maker, and people are like, oh, see, that's the devil. Well, listen to the next line after this, guys. He's wrestling spiritually with this. So, you know, Jesus Christ, deny your maker, he who tries will be wasted. 
right? So he's wrestling with this whole thing going, you know, gosh, you know, if I, if I do this, if I do that, I know what the outcome is. And you know, if I deny my maker, Jesus Christ, I'm going to be wasted. So again, guys, some things aren't always as they seem. So I hopefully, um, some of my, my friends of faith out there would kind of like, you know, take off their judgmental hats and, and, and take a listen. This guy was just really struggling. Come on. He committed suicide, right? I mean, let's think about this. The guys are doing drugs and they're, they're having a really tough time. And that's actually epitomized a lot of the grunge movement. I mean, look at how many people died. Even Scott, Wyland later, like he may not have died in that era, but these guys, you know, Chris Cornell killed himself. I mean, we think he killed himself, but um, anyway, there's a whole debate on that one too, for sure. But he certainly had depression issues and he was taking antidepressants too. Every time he went out on stage, you kind of unfortunately see that sometimes, but all these guys, Eddie Vedder is the only guy I think alive. I don't even think he does drugs anymore, but one of the few guys that have made it out of this whole era where all these guys are gone now and died early as a direct, Kurt Cobain, right? Died early as a direct result of this depression and taking drugs and you know, everything that went with it. So gang, hopefully you like what you heard. Um, hopefully that was helpful. Helpful. And again, I'm doing most of this by request. So make your request known, put it in the description and check out my next video.